Biggest show in the game. Crack! Yo, Eric got it. I got to get out to see. It's real. I'm in the studio. I'm back in this bitch. Right? Look at, look at my man. See my man in there? That's SNF JT. He in there making a motherfucking hit as we speak, nigga. I'm in here. As we speak. Jackson. It's my man. What's going on? What's going on? So you know, we in here just, just showing in this juice. That's why engineers. What up, what up? This the crack house. Look, this is that's the crack house Atlanta, nigga. I'm in my crib in Atlanta. You know, we getting it in. Oh, look it. It's a white Russian motherfucking thing. You know what I'm saying? I got all the motherfucking artists here, and this is what we do, crack. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, yo, hey, yo, er. You know what I'm saying? I'm so back. I'm back at these back niggas. Oh yeah, yeah, full fledged. I'm back at these niggas. My my nigga JT, he really inspired me because this nigga's so talented and get busy so hard. I'm just trying to find a quiet place. This the theater room. You know what I'm saying? It's my Atlanta crib. This is where I make tales. Everybody fucks with tales. Tales is coming back too. I start filming in October. Please don't let COVID push me back anymore. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, your herb. You had the number one show on BET, yeah. and COVID like slowing it up. COVID like, was COVID slowing everyone up. It's everybody. not like it if got it was just to do with you, it's everybody. That's only listen, crack. Only you know how to fucking maneuver and create something inside of a pandemic that gets a check. <laughs> to rock a vodka you can trust. Look, to rock. <laughs> Remote My TV man. every Tuesday at 10. Every I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. I've been the made something out of nothing. I'm yeah. Man, I don't care. Yeah, I'm I mean, I'm the, same, something. I'm the same nigga. So that's why, look, this pandemic, it really has slowed down the TV and the film thing, right? So that's when I took the opportunity, and God blessed me with JT. And I just been going hard. I got like three albums of hit records, real talk. And then, you know, I did my, my one, two steps, you know, and I'm probably going to sign my, I, I'm going to sign my first distribution deal. Hey, I want to say that Crack inspired me too, because Crack was like, Gotti, if you don't go independent and get all of the money yourself, you're a fucking idiot. My man Hove, Hove had told me, I'm not talking to you no more if you, do, if you take anything short of a distribution deal. So the crazy shit is they put a 50-50 joint venture on the table for me, crack. And I sat there and I was ready to sign it, like for JT. And I was like, I told the label owner, which I'll reveal once I sign and the deal is done, because it's a few labels that's, that's fucking with me, so I don't want to say anyone's name yet. But uh, I told them, I said, Joe, I can't sign this deal. They said, why? What's the matter? I said, Joe, I signed a 50-50 a, a joint venture 20 years ago. I said, I'm not, I can't do it. And they said, well, what do you want? I said, if I said, it's I amazing that, there, that, that there's hybrids and there's cars that, that you could put electricity in and everything, but these major labels got the same <laughs> fucking right. record deals from 1990. Right. But I, hey, hey, I basically stood on my grounds and I was like, I'll take a distribution deal. I own all of the masters. I get the majority of the money. And I said, and I still want to use your, your label. So that's what my deal is. They gave, they given me seven figures and they giving me a great distribution deal for murder rank, which is gonna, for the first time, I'm like, damn, I'm so excited because I'm like, you know, with murder rank with John Ashanti and Lloyd and my murder rank presents albums, Crack, I was doing 120 to 150 million in business a year. And I did that for like three, four years. Crack, I'm telling you right now, if I could go on a run like that, that generates that much money, <laughs> and I'm getting the majority of it. Something. What's the biggest check you ever received? One check, one solid check. Like 15. 15 million? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just with my. I was just, and I don't know how they do these numbers or whatever, but I was with my uh, banker at Merrill Lynch. Shout out Sonia, right? So I went with my banker and she said, yo, 
she, you know, she always tells me what I'm worth. And this is not like Wikipedia shit. You know what I'm saying? It's really what I'm worth with my properties. And I was very happy. <laughs> I, crack, I was happy. I ain't going to lie. I was like, I said, did you do all of the numbers right and dot the I's? She's like, yeah, it was like 50 mil. It was like, and I, but I was like, for a nigga from Hollis, Queens, and grew up dirt poor, a lot of love, but Earth, no money. You worth 50 million? Yeah. I was, I was like, that's good. You want to know what's crazy, Herb? Is right. that you worth 50 million, and everybody who ever worked with you never said nothing bad about you. Nah, never I, said I, you I overpay. Crook. Never said I overpay. you jerked them. Yeah, never I overpay. Never said nothing like that. Especially if you turned out to be like Ja or Ashanti or whatever. I, I, I over. Like with Ja, I literally, Joe, would ask my lawyer, what is a great amount for Ja to get? So if he would be like, four million, I'd be like, I'm going to give him five. You understand? I would always go above and beyond because I just love Rule and I never wanted him to think anything, anything on me. That's why me and Rule is just something else because we honestly, we, I've never had an argument like a fight with Rule. Never. That's a, a true testament to Let me our ask friendship. ask you a question though, Herb, right? Yeah. With Fed cases and beef with everybody with this and this and that. Why would you bring it back to Murder Inc. and not just start you, fresh with the you new know, artist, a new label? Listen, listen. Like I'm doing phenomenal in TV. Let's just talk about TV for one second. I in ready to go to production, but pandemic got it held up. Tales season three. Trap Queens, which is a spinoff of season one's episode of Trap Queens. The Operator. If y'all ever seen the documentary uh, on HBO, uh, The Scheme, with my man Christian Dawkins, it's the college pay for play. That's on BET as well. I Want to See You Less. A 30-minute comedy about Shaquille O'Neal and Shawnee O'Neal. About an aging basketball Hall of Famer who wants to come back and get back with his wife. Straight comedy. I read the first episode the other day. I was reading it, holding my stomach. Like, this is going to be a great comedy. It's on TBS. It's already sold. It's on TBS. Shaq and Shawnee is executive producers along with me, my man BJ. Right? BJ! The, listen, The Click. The Click is like entourage, but on a hip-hop. New, young, rapper, puts out his own record, blows up, has to go from Chicago, goes to L.A. to record his fucking album. So it's him and his clique from Chicago. So it's like Entourage, but really on the music level, on the hip-hop music level. So I got five TV series, okay? Let's go to movies now. Let's transition to movies. The Supreme Team is coming. The Supreme Team is coming. There's nothing you can do to stop it. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Hold on. Let me tell you who's my partner in production and making this. Todd Phillips. Guys, if you've seen this little movie called The Joker, Todd Phillips. Yes, Todd Phillips. Try and stop it. Todd Phillips is going to make the Supreme Team with me. Wait a minute. Do you guys like Narcos? The TV series Narcos, the writer and creator, Chris Brancato, wrote the Supreme Team. And for all of y'all, Herb Gotti can't make the Supreme Team. You wasn't even around Supreme in the 80s. But that's my man. You know who's making the Supreme Team? Supreme! He's talking to Chris Brancato. Herb <laughs> Gotti can't make the Supreme Team. He wasn't around Supreme in the 80s. No, I wasn't. But he's my brother now. He's going to tell him the story. <laughs> what you going to say now? Supreme can't tell Supreme Team story. Wait a minute. It gets better. You know who else is telling the story? Fucking Prince. Prince is my man. He's telling the story too. <laughs> Earth. That's, listen, that's coming. Earth. Listen, How listen, is, the deal is already is, done. I'm going to circle back. Crack, wait. The deal is, is Supreme doing? You know, Supreme is just one of one. Because 
I speak to him. You know, we speak often. He speaks to BJ like almost every day or every other day. He's always in the best spirits. This is a guy who's probably never coming home, is in the worst jails. Yo, it's so crazy. He was in a jail, I believe it was in West Virginia. This guy, Prem, never complains about jails. He was like, Gotti, these motherfuckers in here, I got to get away from these motherfuckers. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, every day, someone is getting it, nigga. He's like, this is the worst jail I've ever been in. And to hear him say that was shocking. They transferred yeah. him. He's in Kentucky now. But now, I he's just he's just my best friend, man. He I just no earth. He I love been, Supreme. I just love this guy because here's a guy. I love who, Supreme who, too. But yeah, but here's a guy. But listen, here's a guy who who's who's, who's in, in prison for life, and he gets on the phone with me, and he's just always like, "Get him, Gotti," and he just, he loves talking to me. He not and then. But it's like what I told him, because you know they wanted to give him the death penalty, and he had to fight to not get the death penalty. And I was like, Preen, fight that, because, you know, you could still be a part of what I'm doing. Even in jail, like, he's a part of the Supreme team. Let me tell you something. My best friend is in jail, too, for life. He got big numbers. Yeah. And uh, he's the same way for me, man. He's so happy for me. And he's the first one to wish me happy birthday. He's the first one that like. Yeah, that's like. They, that's that's a blessing, man. But really, it's like doing, and the success that you had. What guys out here need to know: if you got people that's behind the wall, you motherfucking right. Like keep it gangster with them and talk to them or whatever. Especially if they was with you and they was down for whatever with you. Prem's a nigga that was down for, he's down for whatever. Prem used to tell me, he said, Gotti, if a niggas get you and you get shot, right? He said, if you have enough strength, take your blood and write their name on the pavement and I'm going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, Prem, you a motherfucker. But this is the kind of nigga, that's why I, uh, you know, I had posted a picture with me, Jay Prince, my brother and Preem. And I was like, this is my family. And you know, certain people's like, you need to pick better family members. And I've commented back, I was like, shut the fuck up. I'm like, I love these niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a you different nigga. You know what? That's something that's uh, added to your mystique, to your armor. The fact that you've always kept it real with your brother, uh, even though it wasn't, you know, when the feds come, nobody stand next to nobody. Let me tell you something. The most important thing, more than money that you can have when the feds come, is for someone to write a letter on your behalf. People are so scared to come around some shit like that. that nah, they nigga. Just write a letter. Listen, first and, of all. You guys stood next to this man no matter what. Listen, I know about these things. When the feds came for me, niggas scattered from me. They all ran. No one would stand next to me at that point, really. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie. The nigga Dame, the nigga Dame Dash, he, he got me. He helped me get some suits, get me right for court, because I ain't really a fashionable nigga. You know what I'm saying? But J.R. and Lauren. J.R. and Lauren. J.R. and Lauren. Lauren okay? they, they, love, they love that bullshit. They was like, beat him, Gotti. J.R. was like, you're a motherfucker, Gotti. Be a motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. Hey yo, know? and let me tell you something, Eric. You're a funny dude, right? Cause I had never been in a Fed building. I never wanted to. And part of the rule in the streets is somebody get caught, you see them after the case or some shit like that. You know, gotta stay away because it gets real hot. Right. And I remember I got the call. They said, Joe, you know, you got you gotta come in here, man. Like you gotta. You got to show your face. Right. So I, I went and got me a button-up shirt. <laughs> I remember I, when I went in there, in the audience, was me, uh, Tata from Rock Nation, and, <laughs> and Jay Prince from Houston. Oh, my Some God. beautiful friends you had in the audience, right? Yeah. And when I walk in, you smile at me and wave like, <laughs> you know what I'm you like, with the nicest, warmest smile. <laughs> and I remember they had a break, and you came outside and you said, man, you see how the Latinos looked at you when you came in? <laughs> oh, we got this. I said, motherfucking arm is crazy, man. I said, yo. And then they got that infamous picture 
of your lawyers, Jerry Shardell, carrying you out when you won the case. That's that's an iconic you. picture. Oh no, that's that's an iconic, iconic picture. That's a high. That's, that's an iconic guy. picture. Spitting at the cops. Yeah. You know, you getting carried out of court. You know, uh, it's fucked up, but that's these are iconic pictures. Right, right. But here, this is you asked me with the music. So TV and film is great, and it makes me a lot of money, right? And I love doing it. But there's nothing like energy with music. Music brings a different energy. You understand? When you drop, nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up, and the whole world is going all the way up. It, it's just a different energy. And I, I, to my core, am a music guy. I'm DJ Irv. I'm a DJ. You understand? So... I had to double back, but I was waiting for the right artist. So when JT fell in my lap, man, this guy, we be in the studio, this nigga make five records a day, man. And they not yeah, throw away. That's how these young boys is moving, man. They different now. Yeah, Earth. but he's he's a different young boy because, like, I could give him direction, right? You see where I'm at. I'm in the studio, and I, yo, flip this or do it like well, this. You're one of the biggest hit makers ever created. Thank you. But and and I'm giving him I, I never everything. I'm giving you two hundred fifty thousand a, a <laughs> beat, cause <laughs> I can't when I think about that. That I, I never was, had that's a what problem I was giving. giving you two hundred fifty thousand a beat. Hey, but hey, but look, hey, but you, hey, hey, look, double platinum, right? Double platinum, <laughs> double platinum, nigga. Hey, y'all, listen, your herb, your herb. I never forget. Oh, uh, my album comes out. They start playing what's up. Listen, I was in a hotel in Houston, right? And the phone rang in the hotel. I don't know how you used to get the number. <laughs> the phone rang in the hotel in Houston, and you said, Platinum. Platinum, I nigga. <laughs> Yo, I remember that. Like, hey, but that was the first said, time. Like hey, was that the first born. time you went Platinum? First time I went platinum. And then you went double platinum. And, and I went double. But listen, listen, Earth, you called me on the phone and you said platinum. Platinum. <laughs> platinum. And I was like, yo, who's this? And you said, Earth, we going platinum. And I was like, I'm looking, I'm like, yo, we only doing like 25000 a week. But you were so smart and you knew how the numbers was moving. Yeah. That you said, yo, this shit going to go platinum. You know that you know with, you know with hip hop right with hip hop we usually go up and then we will go down with sales during that time you would do a big first week and then you would go only certain records just stayed you know what i'm saying you hit a number 25 30,000 and you just wouldn't drop from that so you do 25 30,000 for a few months and it's like platinum <laughs> <laughs> and that's what all my records was doing all my uh, job records, the Ashanti everybody records. Knows, yeah. Everybody knows you saved Def Jam. <laughs> oh, when shit. You, I got to I gotta catch the Chronicles, the Rough Riders Chronicles in another 30 minutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love yo, X, yo. Yo, can you tell the people, because sometimes they just think you're the biggest shit talker ever. Uh, but you have facts. You know, you know when, when I was watching. The Def, who did you sign to Def Jam records? I, well, I signed DMX, but... I was a part of Rockefeller. How I got to Def Jam was I was, I was part of Jay Dame, uh, Biggs. I was a part of Rockefeller. You know, I I wasn't just Jay, Jay's DJ. I was part of the mechanics and what they was doing, singles, working the singles, shit like that. And that's how I got to to Leo because Leo, Leo. The funny thing with Leo, Leo was trying to sign Ja or forget the fortune. So I first met Leo when we put out Get the Fortune, but we were signed to TVT and he couldn't do it. So when he seen me again, a part of Jay, Dame, and them, and a part of Rockefeller, he called me for a meeting and that's when he hired me as an A&R director. Now, I didn't sign. I'm, I'm not taking the credit of signing Rockefeller the thing, but it was a great move by Leo because I was definitely telling Jay, Dame, nigga, I'm over there. I told, I told Trick Daddy was only on Monday. I said, yo, Trick Daddy, I took your CD to Craig Kalman that told him, you better sign this guy. And mm. three days later, Craig Kalman called me and said, yo, Joe, I signed him. I yeah. didn't know business enough at the time to get myself in that motherfucker. You could have got a check Miami for that. You didn't get a Super check Bowl for that? Weekend. Huh? You didn't get a check for that? Nah, not a finder's fee, nothing. 
Wow. Now, if you see the sign, I don't know if you know, Irv, this is the biggest show in the game. I, I believe you. No. Jopra, I see it no. in the back. I no. see it in the back. <laughs> yo, listen, yo. Yo, Irv, I'm watching all these other so-called journalists changing their DNA of how they're doing interviews. Now, yo, something you never heard. We call this a Jopra moment. When <laughs> something the world has never heard before, we call it a Jopra moment. Right. I'm watching all these other so-called guys changing their whole shit because they know what's the realest shit popping. Right. That Joe show. So you got to have a Jopra moment? I know the Jopra moment. You told me it one time off the air. And oh, I'm God. Gonna through it and I'm going to see if you finish it. Oh, God. this this you I have so many stories that some I can't say. It ain't scandalous. But you told me one time that you believe that if B.I.G. stood alive, him and Jay-Z would have got into a rap battle like Jay-Z and Nas got into a battle. This is just my opinion, everyone. This is in facts. So this please, is a joke for a moment. Please, this is in facts. This but it's a joke for show moment. This is Tell just me my opinion. Your, and your me daughter. knowing Jay, how I know Jay. Now, I'll go back to... <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> listen. I'm a, <laughs> listen. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to Brooklyn's Finest. They got to stop biting my shit, Earl. All right, listen. They I'm going to get stop. you. you the Joker moment is you need to hear a story that is just a, a new story. D tell me this story. Why do you think Jay-Z right, and Biggie Smalls I, I'm going to tell you. You got to go back to Brooklyn's Finest. Mm -hmm. I was dead set against it. I was telling Jay, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And he was like, why? And I was just like, Big, is he's too strong. I said, but before we take over the world, we got to take over the West Coast. Before we take over the West Coast, we got to take over the East Coast. Before we take over the East Coast, we got to take over New York. Before we take over New York, you got to take over Brooklyn. And he owns all that. And I was like, this nigga's not a whack nigga. So I was just like, I was in fear that I was like, yo, you may come off like this little man. You understand? Mm. He was like... So you, so, you, so, so you thought you was about to get them to battle. You, you, uh, are you, no, I didn't want them to battle. I just wanted to do it without his assistance. Because we was friends with Big. Like, Big was at the Ain't No Nigga set. We used to go to these Italian restaurants in Brooklyn and eat. Like, Big, Big is a, was a friend. So it wasn't, I was just on my strategic take over my man, the and brain. Biggie, Gotti I remember shit. when he told me, he used to tell me he was hanging out with Jay-Z. I remember when he was hanging Nigga, out with Nigga, we used to hang out a lot. Like, they yep. were friends. But he I said, him. on a business level, I'm like, man, this nigga is so scorching hot. I don't know if you're going to be able to, to get him. So if you listen to Brooklyn's Finest, I want everyone to go listen again. And how the record was recorded, it was Jay did his four bars, and then Big did his four bars. So when you listen to Time to Separate the Pros from the Cons, the Platinums from the... Dare I say, I, 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 you know, this is my opinion. I'm not saying anything. I'm not speaking for Hov. But, you know, if you listen to that record, he was getting at him. But I said, Big is going to sniff it out. And I said, if you give him the thing, he sniffed it out. Yeah, they told me you're holding more drugs in the pharmacy. You ain't hard, harming me, so pardon me. He was going right back at him. And then what Big did, which I was like, he, that's why Pac was shitting on Jay, because of Brooklyn's finest. If they have twins, you probably have two Pops. Get it? Get it. Two, two Pops. pops. And Jay's on the record with him. So now he's like, fuck you. Ain't no nigga like me. Fuck Jay-Z. Then he start bombing on Jay. So Big was a mastermind and involved this real ill nigga in both the streets and the, and the lyrics and kind of paired up with him. That's kind of how you paired me up with the Ja Rule with the... Uh, but we'll forget about that rap beef I had for eight years. Yeah, yeah. but... Nigga, I I didn't want that. Like I'm I want to make great records. When we made New York, not one time was I in the studio like, yo, <laughs> they riding never, with us never, now. Never, never, never. I'm not even thinking about that. Yes, that's you know right. what I'm saying? But fucking 
So now after Brooklyn finds Biggie, Biggie passed, murdered, and he shot. So it's like we never got to see what would have happened. And and really, when Biggie and Pac died, I mean, just speaking truthfully, J, X, and Ja benefited the most. They filled, they filled so it worked out good. But if Big never died, I always say, it. I'm like, I just don't believe this is my opinion. It's not Jay-Z's opinion. It's just mm -hmm. my opinion. I think Jay wouldn't have been able to play second fiddle. Jay's mm. not a second fiddle nigga. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, he's not a second fiddle nigga. You fucking saying this nigga could beat me? He getting at him, yo. This nigga could beat me? All right, let's see. Jay's not a second fiddle, fiddle nigga. I'm going to come at you. <laughs> so I mean, Big never dies. Listen. If Big never dies, do I think they would have danced. They would have danced eventually. Eventually, they would have danced. A hundred percent. That's your. That, 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 that's your. That's your opinion. It's and, like and I say with you. DMX. Here, like I say with DMX, right? Like I know these niggas. I know the DNA of these niggas. X isn't friends with no rapper. If you rhyme, he don't like you. Trust me. He'll come around and hey, hey, what up, and smoke and, and laugh and joke with you. Go ahead and get in the booth with him. <laughs> he's, he's, he, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite him. I'm gonna get him, Gotti. Like that's just who he is. He's not cool with any rapper. If you rap, he could have a, a friendship with you somewhat, but he's gonna let you know I'm better than you. It's just in now, his. Right, let me ask you a question, right? And you tell me this all the time, and you try to convince me, and I tell you, Irv, I never get high. I don't want to get high. Right. And you tell me your theory <laughs> of, you tell me, you said, yo, you got to get high. Hey, it's, 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 you know what? It's something to be said with drugs and music. You know what I'm saying? It is. Some of the best records that I've made, I was high as a kite, yo. And I'm not, hey, hey, everyone out there, if you're listening, I'm not, I'm not a drug nigga. Like, I'm not, I don't smoke weed. If I smoke weed, if JT is smoking, uh, I'll smoke a little weed. You know what I'm saying? I'm not walking around getting high every day. But I, I have that. to say. Not, not her, bro. I'm not saying that. But you told me, yo, Joe, you're doing a great injustice. You should go to an island somewhere. What's the place, Nick? Listen, crack. Like, you should do it. You know why? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. My wife on an island and Listen, get high. I'm not. I'm not promoting like drugs. I know it sounds like I'm promoting life. Now, here, let me tell y'all about life, and this is why I am the way I am. Everyone is the same. We are all born, right? We're all gonna die. Nobody is exempt. So in between birth and death, we live, nigga! <laughs> All right. So now, go back to what I'm saying. You telling me you don't want, if I'm describing the greatest feeling in the world, you don't want to see if I'm right one time with an island with wifey, and you like, you're going to be like, nah. this nigga got it. You're going to be like, got it! <laughs> Yeah, Irv, you, know be begging God, hey! you know what I love about you, Irv, is that you're free. Yeah. And and when you did when, when you say it to me, even though I'm not doing it because it's not my <laughs> shit. But this nigga, after all of that, he said, I'm, I'm not, not telling doing you, it. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not saying that, but I love that you're free and you live in the moment. Yeah, you live in the moment. You don't live for other people. What people say, you I want to. I want to live life to the fullest, man. You know, I grew up poor, right? So I'm the youngest of eight kids. Joe, you know my family, and you know exactly who I am. Beautiful, right? You know exactly who I am. Cousins, your uncle, family, family, family. And I used to get angry, like we would go over somebody's house. He had a nice house. I would leave and physically be angry, like. Fuck, man, why my family can't have that? Why my family can't live a good life? Like, we got all this love. We the best, we the dopest people. You know what I'm saying? Why can't we have that? So all I'm doing is trying to get it 
and get all of it so me and my family can live. But I'm a nigga, I'm going to live. I'm going to live. You understand? I'm going to get this money. I'm going to be a billionaire. Y'all heard it here first. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get a billion. It's going to be a like, y'all, this nigga's a billionaire. You heard it here first. Yeah, it's and I'm not, you know, no, but here, here, watch. Let me, let me let, it, let off some more secrets. It's like, I, for the first time, everyone talks about getting a billion dollars, right? But I actually see it. Like, I shouldn't announce it or whatever, but I'm working on a deal where Visionary Ideas is my multimedia company. Visionary Ideas has Murder Rank, it has Tales, it has the movies. That's my big company. And I got billionaires ready to give me $100 million because they believe in the kid. And once they give me that $100 million, the conversations of the dynamic of business changes. It's no more me asking to do a show. Me, oh, I have an idea. No, I just do it. And I use my relationships to form distribution situations in music, in TV, in film. And here, let me, tell, let me talk more real nigga business talk that may go over your heads or maybe I'll catch it. The entertainment business yields a 10 to 20 times multiple. What that means is whatever my company is, if it's evaluated at 100 million, when I sell it, I'll get a billion to two billion. And I'm with I'm with some I'm with some billionaire boys crew that believe in me. Straight up. I'm with a billionaire's boys crew that's like, we're gonna set you up, Gotti, and see that shit you talking if it's real. And it's real. Like when it comes me and crack is is laughing no, and joking, it's it's right? Real. But I'm telling y'all real shit on the entertainment level, on TV, films and music, is niggas can't fuck with me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, and please no, no, believe no, no. me. No, 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 Earth, Earth, you're genius. It, thank you, Crack. No, thank no, you. no. You thank are, you. Though. You do know, like, Crack. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, I'm going to outwork out everything. I'm movies, TV, and film. When you keep seeing visionary ideas, know the next thing you're going to see is Earth Gotti sells visionary ideas for $3 billion. Like, I could see it. And when a nigga like me could see something, so everyone out there who's, who's like dreamers or whatever, don't ever forget or, or give up on your dreams. But the thing that with a dream is you got to visualize it. So you got to put the pieces of the puzzle together so you can see it. So what I'm explaining to y'all now, it's like, yo, the Billy is right there. I see it. I just got to go get it now and put in the work. And that's nothing. I'm a worker. I'm a nigga. I grind. I don't have to sleep. You know what I'm saying? I'm an idea nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it's right there. So so I'm trying to, and, and whoever's looking at this, I'm saying to y'all, y'all could get it too. And I don't care if it's a billion or your short girl goal, a million, or if it's whatever the fuck it is. You visualize it and say, all right, I got to get to here, here, here. One of the first steps is me getting this distribution deal with JT. Okay, so now when I get the distribution deal, I own all my masters, I get fucking 75% of my motherfucking money, right? Okay, the investors that's giving me that money, that's an asset to them. They're like, you're gonna, I said, yeah. So once I close that deal, it's gonna help trigger that. And nigga, when you see the Supreme Team movie, you're gonna hear me say, I own half that movie. I don't give a fuck if it's 100 million, I paid 50 million. I, Visionary Ideas, pay $50 million and I own half of that. So when it comes out and generates $500 million, and now Visionary Ideas profited two, three hundred million, now my valuation on my company is like four, five hundred million. Okay, Mark, get that 10 times X you talking about. Get that 20 times X. You do the math. 500, 10 times is $5 billion. So, you know what I'm saying? That's where my mind is. My mind ain't on no bitches right now. <laughs> my mind ain't on no drugs. My mind ain't on no bitches. My mind is on getting my family a billion dollars. A billion dollars. And that's amazing. Yeah. And, I'm going to send Prem a ticket. It's going to be the first time a nigga got a million on his, on his books and shit. <laughs> You're going right, to get more, more, Jack, more Jack Mac than he could eat. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, but that's what and it is.